histogram. Histogram. Look at the histogram. Histogram tells you things. If if you add a uh, histogram, if you add enough numbers to it, it'll create a lot of times a bell-shaped curve, right? And so, or or some kind of version of a bell-shaped curve, like a skewed bell-shaped curve. And so that will tell you things. What can you imagine? All right, I'm gonna give you an idea. You got a histogram, right? And let's, let's see if this even makes sense. I'm going to come up with something off the top of my head. It may not make sense. Um, you're real estate. And you have a subdivision. And you put all the prices in, in a row so you can see the kind of way the f prices flow out, right? So you have this curve that looks like a bell-shaped curve, but it's very skewed. Let's pretend like it looks like this. Okay, so here's you got you put a histogram together and it turns out that all these boxes look something like that. Okay, can you imagine that? All these bars look something like that. Um, all right, I'm gonna erase it because it's gonna make it look continuous again. And you're a real estate agent, and you're trying to sell houses. Here's a ten million dollar house. There's a five million dollar house. And there's a bunch of three hundred thousand dollar houses. Where do you price your house? Why? Okay, you want to sell something that will sell in that neighborhood, right? Not a whole lot of people buying ten million dollar houses next to three hundred thousand dollar houses. So what you might want to do is, if the mean is way out here, you're not looking for the mean. That skewness pulls that mean over, right? So if you just took the average of all the houses and you say, okay, I'm going to average all the houses, 10 million, 500 million, or 5 million, 500 million, 5 million, and then 300,000 a whole bunch of times. Well, our average house is $2 million or $1 million. That doesn't make sense, okay? Because not a whole lot of $1 million houses are going to be happy with a around $300,000 houses. So your mode and your median are right around there. So when you make a decision um, and there's skewness involved, sometimes it makes more sense to look at the median, which is the point right in the middle. If you line all those numbers up, the point right in the middle is going to give you 300,000. Okay? So a lot of times when you hear the radio, it says, well, what's the median income? Because the people at the very highest end will make you look like everybody in the, in the neighborhood, everybody in the town is making a million dollars. Okay, and that's not true. So you can't say you can't base it on the on the average. So a lot of times, if you take an average, you're going to get the wrong salary or the wrong person or the wrong whatever. When you're really looking for the median. Okay, a histogram will give you a picture like that, so you can make a decision. Does that make sense? See all of these, man. Wouldn't you wouldn't you like people to know this stuff? Because it's going to make you more profitable. And it's going to make you have higher quality. Yeah, I've gone okay, over a lot scatter of stuff. This is kind of useful stuff, don't you think? I mean, if you, if you could just create a whole toolbox full of tools like this, it's going to make you more valuable. Because every decision you make should be based on data. And every, there's a tool for every decision you have to make. And if you get, it, I tell you, a good book that I bought, just kind of a reminder book is go to and get one of the, um, one of the books on um, An Idiot's Guide to Six Sigma. It has about 100 tools in there, and it's real simple. And if you find one you like, you can go on the Internet and do a search and see what tool, how, you know, more detail about how to apply that tool. Or you can call me, and I'll just say, hey, we'll figure this out together. Because this is fun. Um, okay. Scatter diagram. Find a scatter diagram. All right. Now this is a different type of tool, and into this, you'd see a whole bunch of dots. Now, first off, if this was temperature and this was cost, what does that tell you? What, is it, what does that scatter diagram tell you? There's no connection. So this would be like um, cost of the software and temperature outside. 
No connection, you know. So, if, so what we're looking for is some kind of connection, right? So as the temperature goes up, maybe the cost of our heating, maybe this is low temperature. Well, if, if that was the case, it'd look something like this. You know, this is low temperature. This is kind of, you know, where we want it to be. And there's high temperature over there. And it would be scattered out like that. Now, what does that tell you? Yeah, if this was like 70 degrees, you know, 70 to 75, and that might be what you have your temperature set on in a house. And so this is over at, at um, you know, minus 30, and this one's over at 110. So depending on the mean average of the, or the median temperature, <laughs> Whatever you use, whichever one makes most sense. Mean would probably make sense here because you can't get a thousand degrees, <laughs> you know. But but that would tell you what your cost is going to do, maybe utility use and all kinds of things, right? So scatter diagrams um, valuable, and here's something to remember about scatter diagrams is that there may be no. This line represents a curve. And there may be no dot on the curve, right? And so all of these variations tell you the quality of your data. Okay? Does that make sense? And, and that's all we need to know. But scatter diagrams are useful even if you just look at the picture, right? There's really some science behind it.